insert funny opening. Welcome back to Chemist Tea Time. Today we are going over a number of objectives such as properties of gases, molecular speed, pressure, and simple gas laws. Let's first start off by talking about gas properties. A sample of gas will assume both the shape and volume of the container it is in. Gases are compressible unlike solids and liquids because gas molecules have larger distances between one another, making it possible to compress them to a smaller volume. Densities of gases are highly affected by temperature and pressure and are very different from liquids and solids. When talking about gases, there are a number of assumptions that we make. The space that gases occupy is negligible because they are separated by such large distances. Gases are in constant random motion and they are constantly colliding with surfaces around them, such as walls or barriers, and with other gases. Gases do not have intermolecular forces such as attractive or repulsive forces with one another. The average kinetic energy of gas molecules is proportional to temperature. An increase in temperature increases the speed of molecules in the gas phase. This graph shows the distribution of molecular speeds for nitrogen gas at different temperatures. As you increase temperature, the average molecular speed also increases. Also, the molar mass has an effect on molecular speed. The heavier the gas molecules are, the slower they move, such as krypton, whereas the lighter molecules like hydrogen, which have a higher average speed. When gases collide, they exert a force over a given area, which results in pressure. Pressure is the amount of force applied over an area, which can be seen in the following formula, where pressure is equal to force divided by area. Pressure uses several different units, such as millimeters of mercury, pascal, tor, bar, atmosphere, and PCI. These units are all used to describe pressure, and, are some, and here are some conversions between these units. As a reminder, gas occupies the volume of the container in which they are in, and the pressure exerted by a gas depends on the number of gas particles. Imagine we had two containers that are identical, A and B. The only difference is that in container A, we have low pressure, and in container B, we have a high pressure. This means container A has a low pressure because it has a low density of gas particles, and container B has a high density of gas particles, resulting in a high pressure. Experiments conducted in the 17th and 18th century show that four basic properties can be used to describe a gas sample. These are pressure, volume, temperature, and moles of gas. These four properties completely describe a sample of gas, and by knowing three out of the four parameters, you can calculate the fourth. The following gas law describes the relationship between these four properties. The first simple gas law that we will describe is known as Boyle's Law. In the 17th century, Robert Boyle and Robert Hooke studied the relationship between gas volume and pressure. Boyle's law shows that there is an inverse relationship between pressure and volume of a gas at constant temperature and number of moles. This relationship was observed by doing a simple experiment as shown here. As you increase the pressure on a sample of gas, the volume decreases. The following J-shaped tube is a device used to measure pressure. In this tube, there is a gas in liquid mercury. As more mercury is added to the tube, the pressure of the confined gas increases and the volume of the gas decreases as a result. If we compare figures A, B, and C, as the volume decreases by half, the pressure of the gas doubles. Comparing A and C, as you decrease the volume by a third, the pressure of the gas triples to 2,280 millimeters of mercury. At constant temperature and number of moles, this inverse relationship between pressure and volume can be described by the following relationship. Pressure multiplied by volume is equal to a constant. This constant is a proportionality constant, which simply means that there is a constant ratio relating these variables together. This equation can be used to calculate the change in the volume of a gas with a change in pressure or vice versa, because this relationship always equals a constant. We can set the following two equations equal to one another as long as temperature and the number of moles is held constant, where PI and VI are your initial pressure and volume of your gas and PF and VF being your final pressure and volume. 
This simple gas law explains the inverse relationship of pressure and volume because as you increase volume of a gas, the pressure must decrease as a result or vice versa. The next simple gas law is Charles and gay lussacs law, which demonstrates the relationship between the temperature and volume of a gas at constant pressure and number of moles. These experiments were carried out in the 1780s by French scientists Charles and gay lussac both scientists were balloon enthusiasts and plotted volume of a gas versus temperature and showed there was a linear relationship. As they extrapolated this data, they saw that the slope was constant and that the y-intercept was always negative 273.15 Celsius or 0 Kelvin. This is a theoretical condition because a gas cannot occupy zero volume. They saw that temperature and volume were directly proportional to each other, and as you increase temperature, the volume also increased and vice versa. For example, if you have a balloon and you increase the temperature, the gas molecules are going to move faster and increase the volume of the balloon. Also remember, in order for the number of moles and pressure to stay constant, the volume has to increase to keep the number of gas collisions constant. Charles and gay lussacs law can be described by the following equation, where volume divided by temperature is equal to a proportionality constant. Because this is equal to a constant, we can look at the change of volume or temperature by setting the following equal to each other, where Vi and Ti are the initial volume and temperature, and Vf and Tf are the final volume and temperature. When calculating values for gases, temperature must always be in Kelvin. This expression can be used to calculate one of the variables as long as you know three out of four. Remember, this simple gas law shows how volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other, meaning if you increase temperature by a factor of two, then the volume must also increase by that same factor. The last simple gas law that we will discuss for this lesson is known as Avogadro's law, which looks at the relationship between volume and moles while keeping pressure and temperature constant. It is important to keep in mind that each of these simple gas laws hold two of the properties constant at a time. Avogadro in the early 1800s postulated that at constant temperature and pressure, equal volumes of gases must contain the same number of gas particles. This hypothesis, which is more commonly referred to as Avogadro's law, demonstrated that volume and number of moles of a gas sample are directly proportional to each other. Meaning, as you increase volume by a factor, then the number of moles is also increased by that same factor. This law can be described by the following expression. Volume divided by moles is equal to a constant. Just as we have seen with the previous simple gas laws, this equation can be used to describe a change in volume or moles. We can set the equations equal to one another where the Vi divided by Ni is equal to the final volume divided by the final number of moles. As a brief recap, Boyle's law states that volume and pressure are inversely proportional at constant temperature and moles, which means volume increases as pressure decreases and vice versa. Charles' law states that volume and temperature are directly proportional at constant pressure and moles. Volume increases as temperature increases and vice versa. Avogadro's law states that volume and moles are directly proportional at constant pressure and temperature, which means volume increases as the number of moles increases and vice versa. I hope you all enjoyed today's lesson and thank you for watching Chemist Tea Time. Have a wonderful day.